Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and dazzle you with breathtaking cinematics. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 40 minutes? Then park it right here and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. Hey, it's a beautiful day in the bay, and you're looking across the subject of today's build, and that is the Concourse Park area of town. Yeah, it's this big, huge area that you can see bordered up by this big arterial here on the right side, and all the way on up here to this little, ah, this little tiny service road up here on the left. And it's a big space today, and we're going to do something really fun. But before we dive into that, I want to talk about this episode. This is episode number 40, and this is a milestone episode for us. Wow, I can't believe we're on our 40th episode already. <laughs> and you know what that means. If you are one of our Patreon members, specifically the Magnificent Masters or Able Apprentice levels, that means there's a save game that's waiting for you out there on Patreon for you guys to download. So... If you guys aren't Patreon members, you're going to want to sign up so you can get a copy of the saved game of Pengasus Bay. You can go explore it on your own. All right. Well, back to the subject of the build. We're going to be building out this space and we're going to create an area that's you kind of see as reminiscent with spaces around international airports, which is this big sea of concrete and asphalt, lots of offices and shopping and industry. And, you know, I'm thinking about like all of these businesses that do business overseas or international business and that's what the subject of this area is going to be i, I want to put in some some commercial stuff because i've got some residential neighborhoods that are nearby i've got some office park ideas that have been given to me and then also i want to put in a lot of industry because as you recall from our last episode we're still kind of struggling to to, to beef up our industry in the city and i'd like to see some more fo food producers coming into uh coming into the city all right well, I just threw a lot at you guys and gals, so with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to jump down here and lay out a road net. And I think what I want to do is really kind of clearly define these each of these spaces. This space down here kind of being our, I don't know, like our retail space down in here. And then, of course, some light office in here. And then the light industry back in here and a little bit more light office back in there. So... Uh, I think I want to just grab a spot. Mm, let's check our terrain first. Yeah, let's let's tidy that up just a little bit. Although that's not that's not a bad little decline in there. I think it could be just tightened up a little bit here. And then we'll come back in and smooth that out. We'll pick a spot, say right about here, and we're going to drive this road right straight up along until we run into this road here. And then I'm going to pick a point. Let's call it maybe, I don't know, halfway between uh, this intersection and this intersection and just kind of run straight out like so. Yeah. And then it doesn't have to be perfect. We, we can pick center points coming out of here. Uh, let's come out of here. Just run out in this direction like so. We'll do the same thing coming out of the center of this one here. We can continue this road out quite a bit more. Yeah, and now we want to pick anchor points over here. I'm going to turn my terrain lines here so I'm not, yeah, so I'm not tearing into any terrain. I'm going to come right down out of, well, let's pick a spot here. Just run straight down towards this road there. And then I want to do the same thing over here. Maybe pick this spot uh, right about, let's see, is it, hmm, maybe something like this. Yeah, and now I can curve those roads in. Yeah, there we go. And now we've got our basic road network in here that's going to allow us to do light industry, office, and some commercial right in here. All right, good. Off to a good start. All right, let's start with this little commercial district down here. And I want to make this sort of pedestrian friendly. Uh, but before I do that, let's just build out our little road network in here. And I want to make sure I have my terrain lines on. And I want to come in, let's just say, you see where this, this terrain line is here? Let's Let's just do a little tidying up in there. There we go. And let's pick a point here that's about halfway. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. Just come out, uh, let's go 64 meters. And then we're going to go up to uh, stay about four squares away from that next road. And then come all the way across here and then up to there. There we go. Now we've got a nice connection in there. 
And now I can come back across here, like so. Uh, I want to bend this piece up into there. So let's just go with a simple curve. And I want to run straight out of here until I get to that snap line, which is, what, 72 meters. Let's bring this north 72 meters. And then hopefully we can go straight on into that. Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. That's nice. That's nice. What we'll do is we'll grab a um, North American style building here. And I want to come down into this space right about here and go one, two, three, four, five by five. I think that's probably about the largest configuration we can have in a commercial space there. That's a big five by five. And then let's just grab some pedestrian street. And uh, let's see here, turn off that. Just run straight out of this. I'd like to come back over here and with a, just like a regular two lane road and bring this right back into here. So let's turn our snap, our grids back on. Just bring that up and hopefully, yeah, that makes for nice squares. And now I can come in with another commercial side, this commercial building on this side. And uh, let's go here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. In fact, do I want that on that? Yeah, that's what we did on the other side. Let's do that. One, two, three, four, five. There. Nice big anchor store there too. And now what this will allow us to do is it allows us to come in with some parking. I want to put some parking. Uh, let's see here. It's a large lot. That's too big. So let's come in with some medium parking. Yes, because then I can put some walking paths that kind of make their way through here and through here. In fact, I wonder if I can just draw a uh, pedestrian road through here. So now I've got some situations here where I can come in with some smaller commercial buildings. And I'm going to turn on both North American and European. And I'm going to start off with a, uh, maybe I'll go North American here, go two by five. Yeah, okay. And let's just see if I can do a European style one that's next to it, that's two by five. Yes, okay, great, that looks nice. And then let's do the same technique over here, two by five. And then hopefully European two by five. Yes, okay, good. And then we'll just kind of kind of make our way down through this space and this space, just painting in kind of a strip mall look and feel. Ooh, let's, let's while we're here, let's make this another pedestrian road right here that just cuts right straight down into here. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, let's paint those extra commercial buildings in here. Yeah, and that's going to fill in nicely, kind of giving the illusion, if you will, of a, a little shopping, like a like a walking mall shopping district. I, I like the look of that. So let's jump on over here. I think we're going to need some more parking because what I'm envisioning here is we're going to need, we're going to keep putting in like these little two by twos that are going to go right down along this boulevard here. So I'm going to go a European style two by two, right? Well, maybe a two by three. What does that look like? Yeah. Okay. I think that might be the plan. And two by three and then alternate between North American and European and just kind of go two by three, two by three, two by three. Just kind of keep doing that. Let's put in some parking right there too. Mm, let's see here. Medium, I think medium fits. I don't think large, again, I don't think large will fit in there. No, it's too big. Let's just go with medium here and I want to keep it up kind of close to that, that pedestrian road there. Yeah. And then this, let's just connect through here. I want to grab a road, just a regular, auto road, you know, a car road, and just bring that straight through here, uh, right along like so. We'll trim that piece off. Yeah. And then this can be a little bus loop. Now I want to come back in here and just grab some little two by twos. And I'll put the two by twos along the curve here. So we go two by two there, two by two there. Mm, I guess this will be a two by three. A three by two, I'm sorry. And then we'll go North American three by two. And then we'll go just kind of keep alternating here. We'll go European on this side, North American there. And just framing these up. And we'll continue that two by two pattern kind of all the way down along this, this Spruce Street right down here. And then speaking of two by twos, you've got a lot more space right over here now where I can go in and go uh, two by two there. In fact, let's let's make them all European. Yeah, like that. So it really densifies that space in there nicely. And yeah, we're probably going to need more parking. 
Uh, but we'll also get bus service coming through here. Maybe there's um is there room for a parking lot down in here? And is is this is this okay? It's flat, isn't it? Yeah, and so if I put this parking lot right in here, that's alright. That's that's gonna fit in there just fine. Then I can come back and Wow, okay. Well, maybe we'll put two parking lots in there. Yeah, in fact, that, that probably looks better. And it does look a little bit more like a shopping mall than there, doesn't it? With all this extra parking here, right outside your anchor stores. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to be really, really slick. All right, let's paint in the rest of that commercial. Sit tight. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to like that. And then I'll come back on this side and do the same thing. As it turns out, we're probably going to have a fair amount of you know, fair, a fair amount of parking down in here. Uh, so let's just kind of go with these two by three configurations. You can see our commercial demand is starting to really uh, take a nosedive. So maybe we'll take a break from that for a second. <laughs> All right, now maybe we can jump over here and start tackling this office area. So the first thing I want to do is I want to build out my little road grid in here. So let's come out with um, maybe the center section from here, uh, somewhere right around here. I think that's probably fine. And then we'll cut all the way across here, divide this into two sections. The first section, I want to bring this road out maybe from, mm, let's see here. If I come out from here and bring this straight across, I can bring that straight back up into there. That's fine. And then on this side, I want to take this road, bring it straight across. We're going to bring it to there and then come up to here and then connect into this little road here and in fact I'll bring this road straight up to there and then I'm going to come across with an alleyway bring that alley to there and then hmm, we've got this other space here maybe I'll come up with this alley to uh, let's let's go to here and then bring it up to here and then right straight back into there there now I've got a nice little road grid in this space that allows me to put a variety of different office shapes and sizes in there I think I want to start with some larger footprint offices too, and, I, and I'm going to keep it at low density and just build in like a big one right here, like a six by six. Yeah, a big six by six. That'll be really nice. And the reason I want to do this is because I'd like to have these six by six office spaces just kind of taking up some of the big chunks back here away from the um, kind of this, this frontage here to the office park. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to be able to come in here then with like, um, you know, like two by fours. Yeah. And then a, another one here. And let's see if this will stay as a two by four. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. And we'll do this. Nope. Our office demand is starting to go down. And that's just fine. That's just fine. So we will, as you see, the office demand has, has really cratered. We'll have to shift our attention now over to... Um, Come back over here, put in some more of that commercial. There we go. Now we've got some more commercial back in place. Our commercial demand meter continues to rise too. So we've got the opportunity to continue to build out more commercial. That's great. Well, let's see here. These are little two by twos right in here. I think they could be. Let's do a European one on the corner because those are always, well, let's, let's take it off the corner. No, let's put it right on the corner. Yeah. And then we'll do North American times two and drop in another European right there and now we're really starting to densify this area with that commercial and this will become a really nice bustling shopping district over here all right so our office demand is uh is is low right now we've got a lot of offices going in so let's turn our focus over onto this space now which is our industrial and i want to put in some light industrial in this space now i want to build out a road network in this space that's going to allow for me to build our industrial buildings in two by three configurations and so i think the best way to do that is let's grab a bunch of alley roads we're going to put in a number of alley roads in here um, that'll that'll allow us to uh, set up where we're going to be first of all i want to leave one square grid off one squared buffer off of this road here so i want my alley roads one two three to be right about here i just want to use this road just for starters and then uh, i want to do something similar here we're going to leave a one square buffer here and then go one two three so this is going to come to here and connect into that if i come in with this larger road here bring this right straight on in to this area here 
I'm just going to bring this all the way out here for starters. I'm, I'm not going to keep it there probably, but we're just going to start with that. And then I want to come up here like so. And again, trying to keep one square, then one, two, three, and then there's where the road will go. And then just bring this back across. And then I want to create something else, sort of interesting here. I just want to create different patterns um, where I'm coming up into here. And then maybe this road here where I've got a series of these, it's going to reorient here. So I have one square on there and then one, two, three, and then this road will come up to here. So I can orient a series of buildings kind of going this way. And when I say that here, let me show it to you. <laughs> It'll be easier to, to describe or to show than to describe. So I've got a two by three there and another two by three next door. Then across the street, I want to have another two by three there and another two by three there. And then I'd like to have um, a, a, another two by three that that is adjacent to it. So I'd, I'd have to come in here with an alley road that comes off of here and just stems down to about there. And this is going to be kind of a little tangle town of of different um, different little blocks or different little clusters where we have these little neighborhoods popping in here. And so if I come in across here and do a two by three there and a two by three there, uh, I've got that one in place. Here, let's take this road out. And now I can kind of change my orientation if I wanted to and have some two by threes going here and then two by threes going here. And then let's see here. So if I had a two by three that came off of this main road, then I can put in a an alleyway right here that runs along here and then put another two by three in behind it. But you can see it's going to have this kind of alternating pattern of two by three buildings, two by three, two by three, two by three, that might have different orientations. Now I'll go through here and I'll build out a little road network here that's going to allow me to do that. So why don't you guys sit tight? This is kind of a tedious part here. Okay, now you can you can see what I'm doing in here is I'm just kind of building this kind of I don't know, I don't want to call it a checkerboard, but it's it's a it's a configuration where I've got this orientation and then this or orientation and then this orientation and then this orientation. I'm just trying to create some visual interest here in an otherwise, you know, kind of bland part of town, which would be industrial and manufacturing. And you know, part of the reason I wanted to build out this industrial space down here is let me just jump in here and take a look at our population. We've got some really kind of funky things going on here in the city. Uh, you can see our birth rate, 810 a month. Our death rate is 1360. We've got 3,800 who have moved in. And, I, and I, I'm not sure if this is over the last month or, or what the uh, statistic is. 395 that have moved away. There are 73,000 jobs in the city, but uh, only 41,000 people are employed, which means that there's an unemployment rate of somewhere around 15.8%. I'm not sure how they do. I'm not sure how they do the calculations on these, but uh, you know that that kind of gives you an idea of where we're at. And I want to make sure that I have jobs for people um, because that unemployment rate of of almost 16% is is pretty alarming. Actually, it's it's very high, and so I'm building in a mixture of uh, what I would consider to be maybe low skill jobs and high skill jobs. Obviously, we've got commercial stuff down along here. We've got some industrial that's coming in here and some office that's coming in here. And hopefully this variety of jobs will help within the city uh, because we're continuing to see a decline in our population. And I'm not sure why. You would think with good jobs and low taxes that uh, that we'd see an increase in our population and people would want to rush in and fill these jobs. Our residential demand meters are still pegged pretty high, um, but one of the things that's 
you know kind of curious to me is is I've gone through and, and added some additional high density residential buildings here in the town and that hasn't resulted in a an uptick in population well there you go now we've we've kind of created a, a really modest little uptick and hopefully that'll go as people start to want to jump in and fill these jobs so I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of continue to come through and we'll paint through some of these bigger blocks here like this is going to be another good six by six there or maybe it's uh, two three by sixes and then let's see if we can put another one in here yeah in that corner I like it and then we'll just uh, we'll frame this space up here with some of those two by fours that we had done on the opposite side as well just so we kind of have some some visual symmetry going on but now you can see our office demand is going down quite a bit and uh, so we we'll just kind of kind of play this cat and mouse game if you will uh, offering office demand, offering commercial demand, and industrial demand to try and keep that on the, uh, you know, on an upward trend as opposed to uh, keep our population on an upward trend as opposed to a downward trend. We want to get people to move in and take these jobs. Yeah, and I think there's probably some adjustments that are still going on with all of the work that we did on the other side of town with our our farming district and, and adding new farming resources and so forth. So. Eh, there's probably just a lot of uh, fine-tuning and tweaking that's going on throughout the city as we move forward through time. One of the things I wanted to show you guys too is our monthly balance is at 12.8 million. And then as you look at that production, as you recall, last episode we started off with a very modest surplus for materials, uh, which was grain and, and livestock and then also produce or vegetables, I, sh I should say. And we still have about the same surplus. It hasn't really changed. So we, even with all of that work that we did over on the, uh, you know, in the in the farming area that we built in our last episode, it didn't really make a change to these areas here. Now, let's jump back down and take a look at the uh, the food here. And you've got beverages, you've got convenience food, and you've got regular food, and that still seems to be a challenge for us. So I don't know. I'm not sure what the mechanic is that's in play to help with. Um, help with producing food but it doesn't seem to be working properly so anyhow just wanted to bring that in as a as a you know, point of information for those of you who have asked about that uh with you know coming out of our last episode um it just appears that there wasn't really much done in the uh, mechanic to really help us uh feed our residents so well, i'm going to continue to build these spaces out so uh sit back and relax Welcome back from our mini time lapse. And I wanted to show you this, uh, all the changes that I made here in this space. Oh, look at that. It's cool watching that plane land. Uh, <laughs> I took the liberty off camera of going through and reworking our road network. As you recall, this little tiny alley road here was, was jumping across the freeway. And, and I just didn't like the look of that. I instead pivoted to this two lane road here. And I think maybe what I'll do, even in the detailing time lapse or beautification time lapse, is to create this as to be our connector road coming into here. So we have a major intersection that, that services this road that cuts across the freeway and then over in towards our airport district. Now, the other thing that it did is it really, help, is it really helped to define the spaces a little bit better. You can see we've got some very distinct spaces now. This is the first one we're gonna work on over here. This is gonna be a ni nice light little industrial space here featuring a whole variety of two by two buildings. And then down in this, these two squares, maybe one, two here, my intent is to put some more commercial shopping in down here. 
and then this little one I can reserve for either more industrial or office, kind of depending on how the demand plays out. You can see our demand meters down here. We have a high low density, we have a big demand for low density residential, a big demand for commercial, and a big demand for industrial. But that tends to ebb and flow just kind of depending on you know how many spaces are available and so forth. There's not much of a demand for office right now, and I'll show you why. As I jump over here and you take a look at the office uh, zoning that we've got going on here, we still have unbuilt buildings. We've got you know squares that are zoned for office, but it hasn't filled in yet, and that's just fine. You know we'll, we'll let this fill in at its own pace. You can see our commercial has filled in entirely, and uh, and then so I think there's an opportunity for us to do this over here now. Uh, what I want to do in this space is I want to come out here with just a two-lane road. I want to bring this maybe all the way. Do I bring it all the way across? Sure. Let's do it. And then I want to pick a spot somewhere kind of in the middle. Uh, maybe it's about here. I'm going to just run this all the way out, maybe to there. And then I want to have that T out in this direction here and this direction here. And I want to build in little two by two buildings here. So if I take this out like so, and then one, two, one, two, and then come across here like so, then it gives me the ability to come in here and zone all of these by, in little two by two buildings. And if I take a little path, turn off all my snaps here and just kind of grab this like so, and this like so, then it really maximizes my build space in there. So let's grab some industrial, just a little two by twos. You can see that'll fill in, that'll that'll densify. And then I, let's just come right across the street here. I think I'd like to continue this where I leave one space as a uh, as a buffer off of the main road. And then I'll just come right out here. I'll run this all the way. Maybe I'll run it all the way through. One, two, three, four. We'll just kind of repeat this pattern. And that'll allow me to actually put some two by twos in these little notches down here. So. I can come through and fill that all in with two by two industrial buildings, and that should have an impact on our demand here. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to come down in here and flesh out what some of this commercial space should look like. I imagine we're going to need some additional parking in here. But before we put in parking, I want to do something kind of unique here. I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to destroy King Street for just a second here. And then I want to, let's just see here, turn on parallel road mode. Give myself, give myself about a three width or so. I'm going to turn and maybe I'll keep the grids on. And then I want to find a spot here where this intersection is, yeah, just right there. Oh, I want to make sure I have a simple curve turned on. And I want to come 180 degrees out of that intersection and then ultimately snap to this other road on, yeah, right there on our left. If I bend that up and in now, what's that going to look like? Yeah, just so it matches like so. And it reestablishes the curve on King Street, but then it also, which has now become Evergreen Street, now it also gives us this nice curve on Crescent Street. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I think we can now create kind of a unique little shopping distant district. If I put the grids back on here, just use this as a guideline. I'm going to turn this and this off. Okay, just come in here like so. And then do the same thing on the other side. We'll just come right down here like so. Now I'm free to take this and run this little road here and cut it through. Let's turn this off, turn this off. Just cut right straight through there and right straight through there. And now I can trim off these little pieces. One, two, and this one here, one, two. And I've got the makings of a, a cool little neighborhood down in here. Uh, if I just bring this grid back on and run straight out here and then come back down in here and I think from here what I'd like to do is is bring this down to a point where I can just cut this straight through yeah and then trim these little end pieces off and now we have to give ourselves access into here. So I think maybe this Fawn Street was, would be a good little access point. Let's uh, let's dot in a few shops right here. Um, I'm going to grab our North American low density res, uh, business commercial, and let's see if I can go two by two, two by four. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's try that again here. Ooh, this could be a big one here. 
then I have the opportunity to come back in here and just put in some smaller commercials, maybe a two by three, two by three there. Oops. Let's do it again and again. And then we'll kind of work our way around doing that. So that's going to have a little distinct characteristics uh, of a little village in there, a little shopping village. And then you can see our demand is starting to go down. This is where we'll drop in some parking here. So that parking can then service both of these little commercial districts in here. So let's find a, an appropriate size parking lot. Maybe it is our, whoops, go over here, our uh, medium sized parking lot. That seems to be a popular one. And I think it would fit nicely into this little corner here. It does, yeah. Okay, cool. And now uh, things are starting to fill in there. We can come back in here and, and work on our two by two paintings. Our little, here, I'm just gonna go like this. This is always fun. Little trick there where you can just kind of jump in and get all four corners just by doing that. Our, our industrial demand is already plummeting. So those will fill in, the offices will fill in. We're just gonna continue to work on filling in this space. All right, well, this feels like a really good spot for us to jump in and do a beautification time lapse. I'm not going to force you guys to sit through watching me paint in all of the different uh, buildings that are in here, but it's also going to give us the opportunity to do some fun things in here. You know, I'd like to add some new surfaces in here as well, kind of really concrete this in a little bit better. Do the same in this space here. I think we need to really make this look like an industrial spot. And then similarly with the office space, I could probably even come in here and drop in, I don't know, some Maybe this is, becomes a, gets repurposed as a little park, corner park down in here. Uh, just to soften that up a little bit. Oh yeah, we still have to put in our little, our little bus loop in here. I have to figure that out too. So got a lot of things that I want to tackle here. And, and, and I think this is going to be a good compliment sitting just outside of the airport. You know, you got these, oftentimes you see these low rise kind of dense areas of industrial and office space near an airport because it gets a lot of noise. So, um, you know, when it all comes together, I think it's gonna be a great compliment to the space. All right, well, why don't you guys just sit back, relax, enjoy the time-lapse, and we'll catch you here after the break.
All right, welcome back, and I give you the all new Concourse Park. Yeah, this is this was really cool. I love the way this turned out. It's just a big sea of asphalt and concrete. <laughs> But that's kind of indicative of what you would see near and around an international airport. I always think of places like LAX and, you know, the airport that's close to my home as well, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And there's always lots of, you know, these little businesses and offices and shopping and all this sorts of stuff that's jammed in and around an airport. And I think this really, really exemplifies that. All right. There's a lot to unpack. So let's just dive right on in. We started off with this big commercial district, and you can see I've got these pedestrian walkways and, and boulevards that make their way through this whole area. I wanted to make sure it was very walkable, and I think we accomplished that. There's a wide variety of shops that are in here, and they include some big anchor stores down here in the corner, there, and then back over here, but all sorts of little boutique shops that make their way up and down some of these boulevards as well. Now, I wanted to make sure I had good, good shopping nearby because I've got this big residential space that sits right across the arterial here. And then as I turn my eye westward, you see this big patch of land that's out in front of us. That's going to be all residential in some sort of future build here as well. So I've got lots of shopping that set ourselves up for the future. Oh, and check this little S bridge out here. You can see it's also getting a very good workout. Lots of pedestrians are making their way across the, you know, the arterial via this S bridge. And I think it turned out just great. All right, let's continue our journey on into the office space here. And I wanted to make sure that I created an office park that was eh, just has a uniform look and feel about it. You can see all of our larger buildings sit down here in the center part. Got a couple of major parking lots in here as well. And then it's all flanked up with these two by four, I believe it was, uh, office style buildings in here. And I think those are probably, you know, international traders and customs people and, you know, just a lot of administration that's in and around an airport district. I think that's, uh, you know, this is the perfect home for all of those, uh, you know, all of those occupations. And then I dropped in some surface painter all the way around the exterior of it, just kind of softened th some things up with some palm trees and some plantings. And then I drew in this little park down in here. I, I raised the surface up so it creates a natural barrier or a natural berm between our office park and our industrial area over there. <laughs> and then it's just a nice quaint little park where you could just kind of meander about and it's a warm inviting entrance into our office park district. Now let's go jump over here and take a look at this industry area. There's only a couple smokestacks here and there, maybe scattered throughout the district, and we can always play whack-a-mole and knock those out of there if we need to. But you can see the orientation of these two by three buildings going left to right here, and then top to bottom here. And as I jump over here, there's more top to bottom in front of us, and some more left to right over here. So what we ended up with is, is this beautiful tapestry, and you know, quilt, if you will, of industry buildings that kind of make their way through this with a lot of hard surface, a lot of hard surface all throughout. But I think it turned out great, and it was just the look we were going for to really complement an international airport. Now, this little two-by-two two industrial space is really a, an eye-catcher, too, because it just jams a lot of little businesses in there, especially food businesses like Full of Foods down here. You can see right there, and then you've got Doublebach in there, and there's lots of food businesses that are starting to pop in here to, to really support our, uh, you know, our food, our fledgling food business here in Pangasas Bay. All right. Let's continue along into our commercial district here. It's a wonderful little space. And again, I wanted to put in more commercial because if you look across the freeway, we've got more residential right over here. So they need places to shop as well. And this becomes a nice little destination with again, some big anchor stores here and here. And then it'll take you up to the front to the top five design element where we have massive anchor stores sitting right out here along this boulevard. Yeah, I love the way that this turned out. I've got this big surface painter, you know, concrete area that's out in front here with our little, you know, just our nice little um, retaining wall in here that, I, you know, I envision in my mind, maybe there's a bunch of signs that are along there telling you about all the shopping that's involved in here. And then tucked in behind it, we've got this little walking path that makes its way through here. And it has this great look and feel of an outdoor shopping mall, just a, a nice, warm and inviting, convenient space that's... Uh, Maybe a little bit of a break from what's going on with all the industrial stuff that's right next door. But I dropped in some roundabouts again to soften things up and just, I don't know, make it a little bit more inviting than, you know, your average shopping area. Just continuing along on this journey, just as a, as a side note too, you can see I reworked this road here that, that comes into our couplet road and created a new intersection here, created this nice big through street and a bridge that comes up over the freeway and makes its way down along past our shopping district and kind of into this space where we have access to the uh, the scenes and sites around the airport. So 
All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed watching this one as much as I enjoyed making it. Now you're going to want to sit tight because you're not going to want to miss those cinematics at the end. Those are always a treat. Now, just as a reminder, this channel is nothing without you, the wonderful viewers. And so if you saw something today that you like, be sure to leave us a comment below. I really love hearing from you. I mean, I just love the conversations here around Pegasus Bay. And also the engagement really helps, you know, with the YouTube algorithm to distribute our content to a wider audience, which helps us grow and which helps us keep improving. Now, I want to give a big shout out and a special thank you to all of our members, both here on YouTube and on our Patreon site. Your generosity is much appreciated. And just as a reminder over there on Patreon, there are four levels of membership options. Be sure to check one out. Also, while you're at it, make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the happenings here in Pangasus Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. Okay, well, with that, I'm going to bid you guys a fond farewell. And until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Good night.